All right, everybody, welcome into a special edition, a little Auburn Georgia combination here podcast. Um, as Auburn Georgia get going uh, on Saturday, uh, with me from Dogs HQ is Palmer Toms. Palmer, what's up, dude? How you doing, Justin? Doing well over here. Just finished up a Kirby Smart presser on Tuesday as we uh, prepare for this big game. Excited to head to the Plains and and uh, excited to see this top twenty matchup on Saturday. Yeah, it should be a, it should be an interesting game. Um, uh, dog dogshq.com for, for for those that are listening on my end for all from the Auburn end dogshq.com if you want to get some Georgia information this week. And then, of course, for my listeners, AuburnLive.com. Um, as always, we're going to sort of talk about this game from, from both sides, um, Palmer. I mean, I, I guess what stands out to me in this game is, is um, I don't know the last time – well, the only team to, to come into Auburn with this kind of spread, 14-and-a-half, has been Alabama recently. Um, you know, those are you know, maybe, maybe 2015 when Auburn wasn't very good and that, that stretch where Alabama was so good. Uh, so it's pretty rare for somebody to come into Auburn with that kind of spread, um, especially Auburn sitting here at four and one. They're ranked and they're a two two plus touchdown uh, underdog. Uh, was that surprising to you? You've seen a lot of Georgia. What's your take on um, from the Georgia end on this on the 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 spread in this game coming in? Do you, do you feel like that's right on the money? Do you feel like it's going to be closer? What's your what's your early take? Yeah, I I, I felt like Vegas was high on the. Dogs last weekend, too, against Arkansas. Um, that was a top 10 game, and that was a 18-and-a-half, 19-point spread. Uh, so I think the fact that, that Georgia comes in here at 14-and-a-half, like you said, on the road, it says a lot about what Vegas thinks about Georgia. And, and you know, we both of us know Vegas, you know, wasn't built by being wrong. So, uh, you know, it, it's interesting that, that Georgia comes in as such a big road favorite. I, I think that the atmosphere of Jordan air stadium, uh, you know, it plays such a big factor when Auburn is at home, when, when the Tigers have that place rocking and they're rolling, it's, it's tough to beat them there. Uh, you know, I, I felt like I was there in 2019 when, when Auburn put up a little bit of a comeback there and, and man, it felt like that stadium was about to burst. If, if they had, you know, been able to tie that game up, uh, Georgia ends up pulling away there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm a little bit surprised by that big of a number, but like I said, I was surprised last week and, and they almost, you know, nearly double covered that one. Yeah. That 19 game was, was, uh, was an interesting game. Auburn, I thought Auburn had a shot in that game to pull, to pull off an upset maybe, or to, to win that game. And Georgia's defense was fantastic for three quarters. And then, uh, I think they got a little soft. Auburn got some momentum and it got tight there at the end. Um, all right. All the talk in this game. I mean, it's about Georgia's defense. Georgia's defense has been unbelievable this year, four and a half points a game. Um, and, and from Auburn's point of view, you know, an up and down offense kind of, you can kind of disregard the stats when it comes to Auburn's offense to some degree, because they played Alabama state and, and Akron. So when you see like scoring offense 11th in the country or whatever they are, take that with a grain of salt. Cause they played two games where they scored 60. Um, and so, I mean, Talk to me about Georgia's defense. I've watched a little bit of them. Um, the defensive front's fantastic. I mean, if you had a weak spot in that defense, what would it be if there are any? Man, it's it's hard to find one, like you said. Um, th this defense has been absolutely incredible uh, to watch so far. And and is is if they can keep up what they've done through five games, they're they're going to be finish among some of the best in college football. Uh, and, and that says a lot. I mean, I think Kirby, Kirby has been asked, you know, if, if where this defense ranks among some of his best, he coached some really good ones at Georgia. And, and I'm sure, you know, he's coached some really great ones at Alabama. Yeah. Uh, and, and so, you know, I, I think it's too early to kind of rank this one compared to some of his other defenses that 2011 Alabama defense is one that comes to mind. Uh, and, and, you know, the, the way that they played, uh, you know, so physically um, that that LSU game where it was what nine to six, you know, that low scoring affair there. Um, I, I think Georgia, you know, from what they've been able to do so far this year, um, they've allowed 23 points on the year. Seven of those you can chalk up to Carson Beck third string quarterback and a backup pick six. So defense and special teams has allowed 16. 
Well, they've they've scored more than that. They've they've have two pick sixes on defense, had a blocked punt that was recovered in the end zone on Saturday. So, you know, if, if you're just looking at the defense and special teams, Georgia has won the season, scored more than they've allowed on defense and special teams. And so that says a lot. I mean, like you said, up front, this team is is big and athletic uh, in that front seven with, with Jordan Davis is probably the biggest name up there, literally and figuratively. Yeah. Uh, coming in at 340 pounds, 6'6". Six, six. Uh, you know, he, he he plugs up the middle, is, is a huge part in what Georgia does to stop the run. But this season, he's been a big part of what Georgia has been able to do af- to affect the quarterbacks as well. Uh, you've seen him pick up some quick Devontae Wyatt is another guy that he had a sack and a half on Saturday against Arkansas, uh, really, you know, putting the pressure on them. Trayvon Walker, Jalen Carter, guys that that can sometimes get forgotten, but but are, you know, former five star players uh, coming in uh, on, you know, as you know, kind of reserves as, as fresh legs for Georgia on defense. Uh, you know, it, it says a lot when, when those are the guys that are coming off the sidelines. Uh, to to you know relieve some of the you know the guys like Jordan Davis and and uh, Devonte Wyatt at the linebacker position it's it's Nicobe Dean and and Channing Tindall uh, you know those two guys Dean is is who you expected him to be so far this season um, he, he was the leader of that defense last year especially when Monty Rice was banged up uh, and and you've you've seen him be that leader in the middle of the defense this year, you've seen Channing Tindall grow into one of the best players on this defense, in my opinion, um, the way that he and Quay Walker, two senior guys, um, the way that they are able to get sideline to sideline. Uh, I wouldn't quite say that, that he's on the level of Roquan Smith, but the way that these linebackers move, you know, around the field uh, is, is up there um, that, you know, that's probably the best example of Georgia linebackers moving around the field with that kind of speed and, and this is some of the best, best play I've seen since then. Um, on the outside, Adam Anderson, Nolan Smith, uh, you know, guys that are affecting the quarterback as well. Anderson leads the team with three sacks. I believe Nolan Smith has two uh, and two and a half. Um, and so, you know, I, it, it's, it's interesting to see. Um, I'm curious what you think here, Justin. How do you think, you know, with, with what Georgia has been able to do defensively affecting the quarterback and, and putting offenses in uncomfortable situations. I'm curious what you think here about how Auburn matches up there. Uh, I have no idea. No, for real, like Georgia's defense is so good. It, it, it's hard to, uh, it's hard to find good matchups. Um, you know, Auburn's offense has been inconsistent. They've done things well at times and they, and they, and then they haven't at times. Um, and so it's hard to find something um it's hard to find something on Auburn's offense that they're going to be able to consistently do well. Um, they obviously have two really good running backs, um, but the offensive line has had good moments and bad moments. So, you know, they, they, they did well against Penn state. I mean, Penn state's got a good, a good defense and a good front seven and, and Auburn really did pretty well, 190 yards rushing. Um, but then the last two games, I think teams have keyed on tank Bigsby and uh, he, he hasn't done much the last two games. Now, Jarquez Hunter's made some plays, but the running game has taken a hit the last two games. Now, they've made plays in the running game when they needed to, but it hasn't been consistent. Um, the passing game is just kind of – really, it's a committee thing. So, it's, it's hard to – you know, it's not like Auburn has a guy uh, at wide out where you say, ah, that guy can make plays. I mean, it's really going to be a committee thing. Um, I almost wonder – I almost wonder if somebody like Bo Nix and you see what he does against, you know, LSU, right. You see some of the plays he's capable of making. You almost wonder if something like that is, is your best shot against a team like Georgia. I mean, you think about, think about what hurts Alabama, right. Those mobile quarterbacks, the quarterbacks that can um, create some kind of chaos. Sometimes Um, Georgia's so good on defense that you almost wonder maybe somebody like Bo Nix, that could go the other way. It could completely be a disaster, but it's almost, you know, it's like, well, if, if somebody like Bo Nix can scramble a little bit, make some chaotic plays where it's not there, Georgia's got everything covered, but he makes a play that might be some of their best opportunities to, to move the ball. Um, the problem with that is you, you can't count on it. You can't plan for it. You can't, you don't know when it's going to happen and it could easily go the opposite direction um, and get you in a lot of trouble. So, you know, I, I thought Brian Harson had an interesting quote. And it, I mean, it's true. This this week they asked about the Georgia defense, and he said, uh, 
but obviously he's like, they're fantastic. He said all the right things. Um, but it was funny. He was like, look, we still got a scheme. Like we can't just give up. Like we can't just go in and go, well, they're really good. So we'll just kind of praise it. We still got to scheme it up. We still got to have a plan. We still got to watch what they do. We still got to try to find tendencies. Um, like we still got to, we got to approach this. Like they can, like they can be scored on like anybody else, um, which is true. You, you know, so that's the way you have to approach it. So I don't know. Um, I don't know what's going to hurt. You know, I'm the only thing about Georgia's defense is maybe Auburn can, 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 can show them something they haven't seen. I don't know what that is exactly. Um, you know, you look at that Clemson game and you thought, whoa, right. Well, Clemson's offense has been, is really now they're just bad. I don't know what's going on with them. Uh, Arkansas is the best offense Georgia faced. I've seen a little bit of Arkansas. I'm not a big believer in KJ Jefferson. Like I think he's okay as a passer. I don't know. Um, is there anything that Auburn presents from your angle that Georgia hasn't seen at all? Whether it's a talented running the running backs or um, you know it's a road game. I guess Georgia's played the Clemson neutral site. You know that atmosphere could certainly be um, you know uh, different for them this year, but. I don't know. I think somebody like Bo Nix is maybe one of their better opportunities to just create some chaos and make some plays. Cause it's hard to, it's hard to see Auburn doing anything consistently. I think their best offense is going to have to be their defense. Their defense is going to have to play lights out um, and create some good field position and then hope the offense can, you know, get good field position, make a couple plays. And, and then you got Anders Carlson, who's one of the best kickers in the country. And maybe you can score some points there to at least hang in the game. Um, I, I kind of see this game as a, is two games in one for Auburn. The first game is, is the first three quarters. I think they need to get it to the fourth quarter. And then the fourth quarter is the second game, um, for Auburn. I, I don't think they need to look at it like how they win the game. I think they need a, I think they need a game plan and figure out how do we get it to halftime? How do we get it to the third quarter midway through? How do we play smart so that when going into the fourth quarter at home, um, in that kind of environment, are we within 10? You know, could it be 23 to 30? It could be 20 to 10? Could it be, you know, could it be 20 to 7 where, you you know, you still feel like you're in it um, and then go from there? Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm with you there. I mean, to me, if, if I'm Auburn, I've almost got to look at it, at, you know, get it, getting, you know, hanging with Georgia this quarter. But if you look at what the Bulldogs have done the last couple of weeks, I mean, it was Vanderbilt, but they put up 35 points in, in, you know, a blink of an eye last week against Arkansas. It was 21 points. Uh, you know, that, that is where Georgia has, has really, you know, stepped on the opponent and, and, you know, put them, they've gotten ahead and they've played ahead. So, so I, I'm, I'm with you there. I think Auburn's got to you know have that mentality of, of games within the game. Uh, you know, I, going back to what you were saying about, Bo Nix. I, I do think that that is an area where where Auburn could give Georgia some trouble. Uh, you know, I, I I don't know that they've played a quarterback as mobile as him. Uh, and 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 you saw it at times. Uh, Mike Wright, the, the the quarterback for Vanderbilt, gave them some trouble, but he didn't have the passing ability that that Bo Nix has. So you knew that he was going to run. Uh, you know, and and I think that that ability to to do both things that Bo Nix has. Is is what could give Georgia some trouble, um, you know, it, and and like you said, it's it's kind of that chaos of of you know Bo running around. I mean that 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 play against LSU, the touchdown to Tyler Fromm is is what sticks with me when I think about Bo Nix. That that is characteristic Bo Nix right there. His ability to make plays, extend plays, and make plays. Uh, but like you said, it it has the capability to the potential to go south. Really really quickly too. Yeah. And, and so that's, that's, that's what's going to be really interesting to see is, is whether Georgia gets beat on some of those or makes Bo Nix pay for, for, you know, trying to do too much. And you brought up, a, you brought up an interesting point. It's another thing to watch for. And that is, um, you know, Georgia, Georgia's ability so far to jump on teams. Well, Auburn's been the opposite, um, especially the last, the last two games. Uh, Penn State was pretty even throughout. Penn State jumped out. Auburn came back. It was, it was a pretty good back and forth game. Um, but the last two games, Auburn has come out of the gates um, not good. Obviously, the Georgia State game was just an atrocious first half. Um, and then the first quarter against LSU was terrible. Um, the, the scheme on defense was soft. Um, I mean, they allowed 
gosh, that first quarter, I think LSU had about 160 spot, you know, 60, 70 yards of offense. Um, and Auburn got down 13 to nothing in that game. The last three quarters, Auburn, Auburn won the last three quarters against LSU, but that first quarter was not good. And then every quarter after that, Auburn's defense gave up less yards and less yards and less yards. And, and, um, and they came back and won. And Brian Harson was asked about that. And he was like, yeah, we, we have to fix that. He's like, we, he's like, I don't know exactly. He's like, we, but we have to come out of the gate. Um, it, with, with, with whatever more energy, you know, whatever it might be, you know, he kind of brought up early in the game, especially first quarters, you always see it. Um, you know, that's the times where generally the offense has got scripted plays and, you know, all that stuff. And, and so he kind of made the comment about being prepared and guys, need, you know, first quarter, you need to be prepared for anything and everything. Cause that's when some of that stuff's going to come out scripted. You would expect the offense to be somewhat clean in those first few drives because they probably already know what they're going to run. And so anyway, that's been a problem for Auburn the last two uh, last two games, and and they're at home. Um, but but this is you you don't want to come out of the gate this kind of underdog with the way Georgia has been playing and go down fourteen to nothing because Georgia is going to be licking their chops, going yeah, and, and Auburn's going to be thinking. Well, shoot, you know, I mean, are they maybe we can't beat these guys? It just it just creates a problem. You're at home and well, maybe you have an opportunity to get back in it, but that's just you you can't you can't start a game like that against Georgia and have a prayer of of winning, really. And and quite frankly, you know, we we referenced that 2019 game earlier. That's how that game went. Georgia got ahead, you know, was up 14, 21, nothing there. Uh, you know, I believe it was, or or had a chance to make it 21. Uh, nothing at least, but you know, they got ahead and, and, you know, were able to withstand that, that Auburn comeback there. Uh, and, and so, like you said, it, it's going to be interesting to see how this one plays out. If there's one thing I know about uh, you know, that, that matchup between the Auburn offense and this Georgia defense, I, I know that the, those two guys that are leading those units, Kirby smart leading that Georgia defense. I know he's not the defensive coordinator, but he takes a lot of pride in, in the way that his defense plays and, and Mike Bobo leading that offense for, for Auburn. Uh, two friends, I, I know that each of them would like to get the best of the other there. So um, I, I guess let's flip to the other side of the ball, unless you've got uh, any other thoughts on, on that matchup. No, not really. I mean, I, I think it's just going to be a tall task for, for, for Auburn. I think you got to hope for the home field to maybe create some plays and Bo Nix to make some plays and, and, uh, and hang around. But, yeah, let's talk about the other side because I think that's where – I think that's Auburn's best chance to stay in the game. Yeah, to, to me, you know, looking at it from the Georgia side of things, um, the, the, the big storyline coming into this game is, is the health of JT Daniels. Is he going to play? Is he not going to play? And, and if he doesn't, how is Stetson Bennett going to play? Um, J- Daniels, for, for the Auburn listeners that, that may or may not know, Daniels missed. Uh, has missed two games this year, missed the UAB game with a uh, oblique strain, and, and then missed this last game against Arkansas with a grade one uh, lat strain. So he, he, he's been limited in what he's been able to do. Um, Stetson told us after the game on Saturday that, that he was the starter all week long last week. Uh, JT was very limited in what he was able to do. And, and, and when we talked to Kirby and, and saw a little bit of practice yesterday, uh, he told us that JT was not going to be throwing on Monday. So my expectation would be that Stetson Bennett is going to start. I think it's very difficult, you know, with, with what Kirby preaches. And, and if you don't practice, you don't play. If, if you're not performing in practice, you're, you know, you're not going to be playing on Saturdays. If JT Daniels can't be throwing on Monday and, and we, you know, just, again, just left a press conference with him. He said he did some soft toss today. So he was doing a little bit more today than he did yesterday. But uh, if, if you're not, you know, fully confident in, in your quarterback's ability to throw the ball, I think you got to go with the other guy. And, and, and that other guy is someone that they feel very confident in. I mean, he's got two top 10 wins under his belt, one this past Saturday and, and one last season over Auburn. Um, it, it's a guy who's Stetson Bennett and who's been around the program uh, for several years now and, and knows – knows how to get it done. Um, I, I think he's, he's kind of, he's got a little bit former walk on. So he's got a little bit of a gunslinger mentality to him, but at the same time, he's, he provides a lot of poise on this offense. Um, Justin, how do you think that, that Auburn could give Stetson some trouble if it is him that, uh, uh, that, that lines up behind center? Yeah. By the way, I, I mean, I think, I think George is capable 
of winning the national championship with Stetson Bennett. I mean, he, he's plenty good enough um, with, with that, with that Georgia team, with what you got around him, he's a quality player um, and you don't have to be a superstar um, with what Georgia's put together. So he's, um, and he's just got something about him. Uh, he just gets the job done. Um, you know, I think for Auburn, they're going to have to continue on some of the success they had against LSU in pressuring quarterback. Um, they did a pretty good job of that the last three quarters. I think they ended that game with about three or three sacks and, um, you know, maybe six, seven, eight hurries or pressure, something like that. Uh, hit Max Johnson a few times. So they're going to have to, to continue to do that. Colby Wooden at the defensive tackle position, Derek Hall, um, Eco Leota, who's the transfer from Northwestern. Um, they did a pretty good job of pressuring Max Johnson. That's got to continue. Um, the way Auburn's defense plays this year, it's a little different from what you've seen the past few years under Kevin Steele, where it was all man to man. This year, you're going to have it's probably a 50 50 or maybe a 60 40 split in favor of zone um, over man. And so that's caused Auburn some problems. Uh, they haven't communicated uh, great at times in the secondary. They've given up some busted plays and some big plays just because they, they let guys run free. Um, and so we'll see if that they've got that cleaned up. They did pretty good in those, the, the last three quarters against LSU. We'll see if they can continue that. But because they play a little bit of zone, that pressure's got to be there. Um, against Penn State, it wasn't. That's why that quarterback had such a good game. Uh, they weren't, they were playing soft and they weren't getting the kind of pressure. So that guy, they kept everything in front of them, but that guy was 28 of 32, Sean Clifford. So that's the, that's the deal about uh, Auburn's defense is they've got to figure out that balance of, of rushing. And what I mean by is against LSU, they, they kind of went to more of a speed rush front defensive line. Uh, they had a defensive tackle in there, Derek Hall, who's edge, but then they put in kind of two other edge guys. So they went a little bit undersized because LSU couldn't run the ball. And what isn't that good running the football? Well, Georgia can. Um, and so the, that's going to be the other challenge for Auburn is, okay, how can, they how can they get the right guys in there to get pressure but also deal with the running game? Because Tony Fair, who's the transfer from UAB and is 340 pounds, he's, an, he's, an, he's a plugger. He's not going to really get pressure. And then Marcus Harris, uh, the transfer from Kansas, who's a good player, he, he's their other defensive tackle um, in kind of kind of mix-up player. He can get pressure, but he's not – as good as, you know, when, when, you, when they go undersized. And so that's going to be the balance is how do they, how can they stop the run and also get pressure without bringing the house? And then of course you've got Owen Papo, who, you know, Georgia fans know um, he may not play. He's been banged up. He didn't play against LSU. And that would be a big loss against the team like Georgia. Zacoby, Zacoby McClain uh, should be healthy and is, is obviously an animal, but Papo's a big, strong physical guy that you need in a game like this. And so that's a, that's a guy they really need. Um, you know, Auburn secondary is getting better. They're getting more healthy. Um, Jalen Simpson, their third corner is, is back. He's a good player. So for Auburn, it's, it's about communication. If they can cut down the busted assignments and, and get that figured out, they're a good defense. Um, I mean, really the things they've given up this year have been busted as a spark. Uh, when they aren't doing that, they're a pretty sound unit and at home, you know, I'd like to think Auburn's defense can keep them in the game, but I think the key is going to be, can they, can they really stop the run? Uh, they've got a good rush defense. They haven't really been challenged. Like Georgia will challenge them. You know, Penn State's, you know, they got some ability, but they're not, they're not a juggernaut. LSU is struggling. Um, and so that's going to be the key. Can, can Auburn against their first real challenge against the run, can they hold up? If they can, um, then they'll, then I think they can hang around. The crowd will help them and things like that, but they're going to have to. They can't be um, – they can't just be okay on Saturday uh, and, and give up. You know, if, if Georgia scores 24, like I just I just don't – I mean, it's hard to imagine Auburn's offense without help from the defense, without good field position, maybe without a turnover. Um, if their start – if their average starting position is like their own 30, uh, 25 to 30, it's hard to imagine Auburn scores enough points to, to win this game. So the defense – has to play well and they've got to create some good field position for, for Auburn to win. They just have to. Yeah. Well, and, and, and you talk about that starting field position. Uh, I remember in that 2019 game, Jake Camarda, Georgia's punter who, yes. who has shown to be a weapon, yeah. you know, what was a dominant force in that game earned sec special teams player of the week. I believe he punted eight, nine times in that game and, and was able to flip the field. Uh, you, you, yeah, yeah it, it was, it was Georgia had Georgia had three drives in that game. And they were the touchdown drive. That's it. 
I think they yeah. I think they scored three touchdowns and then punted every other time. But those those three touchdown drives they had, they made plays and scored. If they weren't scoring, they were literally going three and out. It was a very uh, that was a that yeah was, that was they, not a game. Very weird. But, you know, going back to what you were saying about uh, Georgia's run game, you, you give a lot of credit to them. And, and that's quite frankly, something that a lot of people on the Georgia beat don't. And, and, you know, some Georgia fans don't, you know, Georgia has been known as this you know, ground and pound RBU over the last several years. But under Todd Monken, they, they've tried to air it out a little bit more, uh, you know, certainly with JT Daniels. Yeah. You ne- haven't necessarily seen the, the 300 yard passing games before Monken and Daniels, uh, and, and that combo, Georgia has one thing that stands out to me about Georgia on the ground is is they have set and topped their season high in each game. Obviously, they set it against Clemson. They top it the week next week against UAB. They top it the next week against South Carolina. They top that against Vanderbilt. And 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 in the process there, they topped 200 yards for the first time. And this past Saturday, they handed the ball off 57 times, carried for 273 on the ground. Uh, three touchdowns. The one thing that stands out to me though, is, is that Georgia has not had a dominant, you know, a, a single dominant back. It, it, I don't they haven't had a hundred yard rusher. I believe the, the most that they've had this season was Zamir white for 73, 74 yards against Clemson. Um, and, and so, you know, they haven't had a ton of big plays their biggest play on the ground has been 24 yards. And, and, and prior to this past game, when, when James Cook tied that, it was, it was from Lad McConkey, who was a wide receiver on a speed sweep. So, you know, it, it's interesting. They go four or five deep at that position. Uh, you know, Zamir White, James Cook are the two headliners, but you've got Kendall Milton, you've got Kenny McIntosh, Dejan Edwards is a guy who's seen a lot of run more so in some of these, you know, blowout type games, but he's fully capable of contributing if called upon, uh, you know, and, and so it's, it's very interesting to see, uh, you know, how Georgia has progressed in the run game. The offensive line really took it upon themselves to, to, to set the tone last week against Arkansas. And, and, and granted it was a lot, it was a very different front that they were facing, um, you know, three down linemen, eight guys dropping back into pass coverage. So they were, they, they knew that they were going to ground and pound and, and they knew that that's how they were going to win that game. Uh, and, and so they took it upon themselves and, and, you know, did that, they, they, they moved the line of scrimmage, uh, it, it's going to be interesting to see if, if, you know, Auburn sells out on the run, uh, if they, if Stetson Bennett is asked to make some plays with his arm, uh, he wasn't asked to do that last week. He threw the ball 11 times, uh, was efficient seven of 11 for 74 yards. But, um, you know, it, he wasn't asked to make game changing plays. Uh, he was, it was, you know, hand the ball off on the first down, hand the ball off on second down. And if Georgia was close enough to hand it a ball off on third down, they did that too. Uh, you know, really it was, you know, the only times that Bennett was asked to throw the ball was, was in some third and long situations. So certainly going to be interesting to see. Um, one, one more thing I'm going to say here is, and, and you mentioned it with the crowd, uh, this is the first time Georgia has has faced a true road environment. Like you said, it was 50-50 in Charlotte. Uh, Vanderbilt was was more Georgia fans than it was, you know, red, uh, you know, black and gold there. Quite frankly, the, you know, I, I, looking back at Georgia's road games in the past, this this might be the first time they've faced a true road environment since the last time they they traveled to Auburn because they after that they played yeah. Georgia Tech. I mean, that was a lot of Georgia fans there. And then you had the whole 2020 season and, and the only true road game they've played this year is, is Vanderbilt. So it's going to be interesting to see how Georgia handles that. Um, I, I, like you said, I think that Stetson Bennett is a guy that has a lot of poise. Um, you know, ha- there's something different about him. So I think if, if he's the one leading the offense, he's going to know how to handle it um, and, and handle that road atmosphere, but it, it's not just him. It's the guys all around him. Uh Justin, you know, I, I don't know if, if y'all are going to do a podcast later in the week, uh, you know, or, or give away score predictions on your site. But, uh, you know, w- what are your thoughts, uh, you know, in terms of the score, maybe maybe even using that 14 and a half point spread? Uh, you know, w- what are you thinking there in terms of predictions? Um, now, by the way, I did I did predict Auburn to win at LSU. Um, I couldn't exactly pinpoint why, but I just had a, I had a feeling I thought they would lose at Penn State. Um, 
Oh, you know, I mean, this is an awfully tall task for Auburn. Um, you know, I, assuming Auburn's defense plays well, um, assuming they play well at home, uh, don't get, you know, beat on some plays that give up easy touchdowns or something. They might give up a play, but it, let's say it doesn't result in a touchdown. If they play well, you know, I think Auburn's defense can, can you know, hold Georgia to probably – you know, when the game still matters, I think they could hold Georgia to 20, 21 while the game is still in doubt. You know, I mean, if, if it gets out of hand, I could Georgia could tack on late. But let's say when the game still matters, I think let's say late third, fourth. You know, I, could, I, think I could see them holding Georgia to 20, 21 points at the time. I just it's hard to see where Auburn scores, let's say, the 24 plus that I think it'll take for them to win. Um Unless Auburn's defense plays out of their mind and holds Georgia to 14, you know, out of nowhere. Okay, well, then that's a different ball game. Could Auburn scratch out 17 at home, even against the, that Georgia defense? Well, yeah, probably. I mean, they could. Um, it's just – it's tough. I mean, I, I don't know that Georgia covers. Um, if they if, if Georgia covers, it'll be Auburn turning the ball over, I, I think. It'll be Bo Nix. It'll be making some mistakes. If Georgia covers that game and Auburn has no turnovers, <laughs> I will be thoroughly impressed with Georgia. Um, cause that'll just, that'll just be really impressive. So I, I think Georgia probably, you know, practical mind says they win this game, you know, 24 to 10, 27 to 10. Um, it just depends. Auburn needs turnovers. Auburn needs some of these things in this game that you can't predict, you know, for me to pick Auburn to win, I would have to be predicting some things to happen that, that I can't possibly really predict that Auburn's not as good. Um, they're not as consistent on offense. And so it's hard to just say, well, here, you know, Auburn's going to pull it out. They're going to have to have some things happen. Stetson Bennett throws two interceptions. Maybe Auburn gets a pick six. That kind of thing that changes the game that you can't predict. So the important thing is I think Auburn will be in the game. You know, I think midway through the third quarter, we'll be, we'll be saying Auburn's still in the football game. Um, and from that point, then what do you do? You know, do you turn Bo Nix loose? Do you, do you play conservative early, get to a point, where you feel like you're in it, and then and then tell Bo, okay, take some chances now. And then with that, who knows, right? It's one of those things like the band's playing one way or another. Um, so that's why I think it's a game of uh, of, of two games. I think keep, keep Bo Nix, like, under control, stay in the game, and then get it to a point where you, then you can say, all right, let's kind of throw caution to the wind. We have to, and then who knows? And then let's, let's see what happens. That's kind of my take. I know that's a – uh, I hate doing scores because they just don't know. That's just sort of my feel on how it would have to go for Auburn to, to win the game. Yeah, I feel like you read my mind there with that twenty-four to ten. Uh, you know, you you threw that twenty-four number out there earlier, and and and, and like you said, I, I feel like this one is it's not going to be a blowout. It, like you said, if, if if Georgia is covering without you know forcing a turnover, this team is really really yeah. really impressive. Um, I, I think that twenty-four to ten number is probably pretty good uh in terms of late third quarter early fourth quarter i could see georgia you know if if it does end up being that that kind of game plan where you let Bo, you know let him loose uh late in the game I, you know maybe georgia get, you know makes a big play uh you know you, you've got to bring some more pressure on defense or something and, and georgia capitalizes uh so so i think that 24 to 10 31 10 uh that that's that's kind of where i'm my mind is at uh with, with georgia winning there yeah um well it's it's going to be an interesting i mean i think it's going to be a challenge on both sides i think georgia i think this you know who would have thought clemson being the first game that that i would have said i think this is going to be their biggest challenge of the year but given what's happened with clemson i think this will be the biggest challenge of their of their year so far um and obviously it'll be auburn's and so um i think for auburn man look you're the underdog um you know it, it's an opportunity to learn a lot about how far you've come in five games it's a good opportunity for Brian Harson um, and this staff to um, see what they've got, especially Harson. Mason's been in the, in the, in the league. Bobo's been in the league, uh, but Harson hasn't. So it'll be a good opportunity for him to go up against somebody like George and Kirby Smart. Um, and so, and, and just a good opportunity for this Auburn team to try to figure out how far they've come. You know, uh, they've played up to the competition. They played down to Georgia State, but they played up to Penn State on the road and, and obviously beat LSU. And so we'll see if they can – they can play up to their uh, up to the competition uh, again, man. It'll be a great atmosphere. Uh, there's Georgia's going to have fifteen thousand people. They're going to bring people. They're, those people are going to 
find their way into the stadium. I think Auburn obviously will be sold out on their end, so it should be a fun atmosphere. Um, but Palmer, thanks for coming on, man. Uh, again, dogshq.com. Uh, for all the Auburn fans, go read on Georgia. Go get your information there. And for Georgia fans, auburnlive.com. Um, we've got some articles up from, from Brian Harson and, and, uh, and the players and, and stuff like that. We didn't even talk about tight ends. We won't talk about that. I'm sure Georgia can figure out how to cover the tight end. That's probably Auburn's best option at this point on offense. Um, all right, dude. Um, hey, what's your Twitter? Because I need to follow yeah. you if I don't. Yeah, it's it's at Palmer Toms on Twitter. Um, okay. Again, really excited to see this game and and this matchup. Uh, but but you know, excited to uh, head on down to the plains and 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 meet you in person on Saturday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. let's do it, man. Bring your mask. Good grief. Um, but we'll do it, man. It'll be fun to uh, fun to fun to see two thirty CBS. Uh, big game, big game for uh, every every game's Georgia. Every game's big for Georgia trying to win the national title. Uh, and certainly Auburn to try to defend your home field and at least put on a, a good showing. All right, Palmer, thanks so much. Dogs HQ, auburnlive.com. We'll see you, everybody. Bye.